there have been many people in the Pokemon community who made videos where Pokemon play characters. None of them pulled them off as successfully as M and J T V. In 2014, when Michael started to consistently produce Pokemon Talks, it was fantastic. I've been told that Pokemon Talks sucks now and unfortunately, after watching every episode, it's kinda true. Remember, this is a critique of the series and not the MNJ TV channel himself. I am solely judging the series and anything good or bad the creator has done not regarding Pokemon Talk will have no effect on my opinions on the show. Last but not least, don't feel pressured or convinced to match my opinion. If you still like this series, that's perfectly fine. I'm glad you can enjoy something that I can't. Also, I will not be giving suggestions on how to fix his show because I find me doing this is disrespectful. I am an outsider looking in, so I do not know the time, effort, or circumstances that he goes through when producing a Pokemon Talk episode. So join me as I tell you why Pokemon Talk sucks now. Oregon. First, I will leave a Google Docs link down below. This contains my thoughts for each season as I watched it in real time. Before I even watched the series, I browsed the playlist. There were 55 episodes. There was one major green flag. There was a massive quality change from episode 1 to 55. Over the span of 4 years, he has improved. My red flag was around episode 36, the videos went from 3 to 5 minutes to 7 to 12 minutes. This gap is one of my main concerns and contributing factors. Is it quality over quantity or the other way around? From watching season 1 and season 2, or about 20 episodes, I was able to gather the comedic identity of the series. There were three pillars or common types of jokes he used. These are raunch or anything that can get you demonetized such as dirty jokes or cursing, fourth wall humor, and jokes being made out of things with double meaning or misdirection. Some sub pillars are Pokemon puns and humor, in show running gags, and the occasional, but rare, loud equals funny. These are only concerning the jokes. Now, let's talk about the characters. There are only two characters in this whole entire series who should be present and have the most dialogue. These are Bulbasaur and Squirtle. If you haven't watched the show, here's the rundown. Bulbasaur and Squirtle run a show called Pokemon Talk, where they interview Pokemon as their guests. The characters are foils of each other. Squirtle is more of the fun, unprofessional one, while Bulbasaur is the more serious and uptight one. Before I get to why it sucks, we need to talk about how a episode went or how the comedy was created. It was almost like a chain. Squirtle creates comedy by contradicting or making fun of the guest. By doing that, it allows Bulbasaur to get comedic value by his responses to what's going on, mainly a response to what Squirtle is doing. If you want an episode that embodies all of this, check out episode 8. It's a perfect example. That was when the show was great, but now we have to talk about the bad. To my surprise, the show did not fall apart around episode 36. Instead, it took a nosedive around episode 26. This was because of two things. The pace and flow of the show slowed down dramatically, and before you say, the episodes were still around 5 minutes, that's not what I'm talking about. The pace and flow slowed down because he disrupted the chain. Earlier, I said two things. One. Only two characters should be present and have the most dialogue being Bulbasaur and Squirtle, but we'll get to that one later, and the chain and pillar that produced the comedy of the show. The chain was nowhere to be found around this time. For some reason, the series turned from a talk show 
into Bulbasaur and Squirtle have to fix or get out of some situation with no real context. There was no why. Well, yes, ever since Season 1, there has been problems and solutions, but there has been context which gives us a proper why. Look at their nemesis, Pikachu, trying to kill them or, in Season 1, get rid of their show. He was provoked by Bulbasaur and Squirtle, so he went after the two. But all of a sudden, random problems of guests started to appear on their show and Bulbasaur and Squirtle tried to fix them. This greatly hurt the pace and flow for one reason. Because it broke away from the fast comedic pace of the show, where there is maybe a question, a pun, or Squirtle contradicting a guess. Instead, now we have a meaningless story time that makes no sense at all. What I mean by no sense is, why would these two talk show hosts help them out? And occasionally we would get a joke. Them having to engage in this pointless story ate up the dialogue in the 2-5 to five minute time span. So, instead of being filled with jokes, it was filled with fluff or absolutely nothing. You may say, why doesn't he make the episodes longer? Then you can have the best of both worlds. Some jokes and a story. Well, this sounds like a good idea on paper, but in reality, this was a recipe to kill Pokemon Talk. The season 3 finale was dreadful. Then we get to season 4. For some reason, there is a second breath of life in the show. All of a sudden, it's pretty good. This was because for the first 5 episodes, he followed the original formula to an extent. While Squirtle contradicting Guess was not as present, the problems coming out of nowhere was thrown out, and it was just about jokes and the audience figuring out more information about our guest. Then, out of nowhere, he killed his own show. Not literally, but episode 36 went right back to his old problems. The problem was, he made them longer. This caused the jokes to spread out over the course of an episode. The thing is, when the pace was fast, if you cringe or a joke missed, the episodes were so fast that it would wash over you and another joke within the next few seconds or minute would get you laughing. But with this longer time span, the stories just got bigger and longer, but the amount of jokes stayed the same. This hurts the pace, not because of the amount of minutes, but it was just more fluff. You came to this show for comedy, not a story. So, you are waiting for the comedy. You either clicked off by that point, or you're not even listening, and you missed the joke. You just tuned out. Or, if you don't like the joke, you're still waiting. With these stories, every joke has the hit. If one misses, then people will click off. Not everyone has the same sense of humor, so this does not end well. Now, remember when I said the two main characters should get the most dialogue? Well, he messed that up too. For some reason, it felt like the guests were running the show, and Bulbasaur and Squirtle just occasionally said something. Also, his main sources of humor, which fit well with the fast pace so you can get a quick laugh and keep watching, did not work at all here. The only one that did was the fourth wall jokes. Also, Raunch was pretty much gone, but I'll give the benefit of the doubt to Michael. It's YouTube in 2018. Everything is getting demonetized. Also, these problems or shenanigans were way too extra. This show strived on the simplicity. Why do you think Michael, for all those years, 
was able to get away with having a studio be a plain wall. This show lost face. It forgot who it was and what made it popular. If you have been listening, you notice only now I bring up the comedic pillars. Well, for the most part, they have stayed intact. The unnecessary plots just made it seem like they were gone. Now, I want to highlight some interesting episodes in particular that show a longer time frame could still suit the show. These are the Christmas special and episode 50. The Christmas special used one of the smaller pillars with the larger pillar to make funny Pokemon themed Christmas music. And episode 50 had some very good moments. While yes, they added the extraness of the Hoopa and the Mewtwo, take that out and you have a great episode. It had it all including the raunch. Of my parents' house! So? Your parents are nice. They might even offer us some food or- And they're not expecting anyone! Oh. Oh. Honey, I'm waiting for you. Hi, waiting for you. I'm... Daddy. Going into Season 6, I'm going to highlight the two episodes I liked that did not follow the comedic scheme. First was the Twitch Plays Pokemon episode. If you like Twitch Plays Pokemon, then you will love this episode. The rundown is Helix and Burgess fight Dome and the False Prophet, aka a Flareon. But clearly, I was blinded by hype, and the last episode was the other one I liked. It had some good moments. It took a page out of a lot of shows and made two characters appear to be in a relationship to avoid an ex. I actually want to talk more about this episode. It had an unnecessary problem, but there was a why behind it. There was context as to why it affected Squirtle, which made this problem alright and justified to be on the show. From there, we get a bit of misdirection, and if you want to count it as raunch, go for it. Bulbasaur and Squirtle pretend to be in a relationship to avoid Squirtle from getting back together with an ex. This shocked everyone, and them trying to pose as a couple showed a bit of the chain. Squirtle's interactions with the guests create a comedic value, or in this case, that big shock, and Bulbasaur playing along creates some very funny comedic moments. Pokemon Talk will occasionally have a good episode. In my opinion, the show is unwatchable at its worst and streaky at best. Now, if m and TV or Michael ever fixes this pace issue, well, it depends if he knows about it or if he ever sees this video. But to him, it just doesn't matter. This is his most popular series. No matter how bad it gets, people will still watch. Also, that is not me telling you not to watch it. Watch it if you want, watch it if you like it. After all, the same elements of comedy are still there. Unfortunately, it seems that the show has changed to quantity over quality, in my opinion. I'm not saying it has no more quality, but quantity just seems to be a bit more present. This was a show that strived on a fast pace and a short time limit, but it now sucks due to unnecessary plots which create a massive pace issue and hurts the flow of the show. Now, why people keep watching it is because the pacing was there, but people did not know what it was. When I was re-watching this series, it took me a while to figure out what the show's issue was. Something always felt off, but I finally figured it out. To end this, here is a message to anyone with a bad taste in their mouth. This is a critique, so this is just my opinion, so don't be too butthurt. Now, if there was anyone who has the right to be completely butthurt, it should be the man who produces these episodes. I'm sorry if I offended you in any way, shape, or form. 
Besides that, tell me if you want me to do this with other things in the Pokemon community. Besides that, have a good day.